What's up everyone, this is Super Super Marcel and welcome to another episode of Godzilla's Godzilla History and last time we saw, we saw the humans response to giant monsters and that the humans or the GDF has created giant mechanical robots to fight the monsters which it's pretty much exactly like Pacific Rim, when you put it that way. <laughs> Anyways, today, 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 we are we're gonna um talk talk about Galaxy War One. So, a few we a few weeks a after the GDF was created and the world was somewhat in peace from mon monsters. Another alien-like race has found found the planet planet Earth, and they plan and they plan to take take Earth for their own home and use humans for the for as they put it, cows. These aliens are known as Exilians. So how exa uh, exactly are the Exilians go going to take over the world when the humans have giant ro robots with them? To fight against these creatures, well, the Exilians have a, have a plan, and a rather good one too. The Exilians have their own giant monsters. Those monsters being Orga, a giant, extremely powerful monster that can rejuvenate instantly once it gets the gets hit. He he also ha has an electrical beam on the on the su side of his so shoulder, and finally, Orga has venomous sort of teeth that can s suck in the DNA once bitten into the monster, and literally turns itself into the monster. Rather creative, really. There are other monsters such as. There is also Megalon, a giant beetle-like monster with drills for hands. It is exceptionally well built for digging and also has the ability to spit bombs out of its mouth. Also on the top of his head is a massive king's thing horn, I don't know what that thing is. That, and he uses that to fire a massive electrical purple-bluish beam. Then there's Gigan and Ghidorah. Gigan and G now the reason why I'm not showing you a photo for Gigan and Ghidorah this time is because I actually have the t t t toys of Gigan and Ghidorah, both of them. Just hold on. Ah, all right. Here is Gigan. He's a cyborg bird. I'm a people. Yes, I know. He's kind of a cyborg chicken, but I'm just gonna go with bird. Okay. You see, uh, like I said, like I said, the Exilians. Gigan's history was that he used to be like a little dinosaur type of thing in a different pla planet, but the the Exilians have found Gigan and changed him. I guess you could say he's he's gotten many, many lots of features really. Um, his 2004 version, which I don't have with me, has even more features. But yeah, Gigan, as you can see, has swords for hands, which when you think about it would be kind of hard life for for you. He's got a chainsaw be belly belly in which. If monsters get really close, it would just go like, come here. Um, he's got, he's got these little gliding and gliding wings. So yes, Gigan would be a flying monster. And finally, he's got a little cyborg-like eye which shoots out a red, red laser. And now, King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah, and uh, I don't know what you're saying. Uh, for those who do watch the Godzilla franchise and watch, and are looking at this, you're immediately going to tell me, "That's not King Ghidorah. Well, it's close enough. It's a dragon with three heads." What? Uh, uh, right. <clears throat> so yeah, King Ghidorah is a three-headed dra dragon, and he's 
got golden wings since. He he has the he is one of Godzilla's fam second second most famous enemies. Well, to my opinion, not not. He probably is the most famous Godzilla m monster. To me, I think Space Godzilla is more of a oh damn you type of villain. But yeah, this King, King Ghidorah is the second. Well, what? Not not. I've got to say. Stop, stop saying second. King Ghidorah is the is the the world's best known villainous Godzilla monster. And. He 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 probably has the most being being introduced in the most movies, but yeah. Anyways, so now that the so the Zillions had didn't ha had that many monsters as you can see, they only had four mo giant monsters when when the when the um the Earth itself ha ha was like, huh, you only got four monsters and we got an entire army. What what could you possibly do? Well, tur turns out the Exilians had a little special ability thing that they had radio signals or something, and these ra specific radio signals um are used to control. So in a way, they the Exilians mind controlled Earth's monsters and used them as their ar army against the humans. Well, the, the humans were outnumbered. Their me their mechs couldn't possibly take on these me this many monsters, and so they decided decided let's send, let's do something about this. So so the so the GDF sent sends a small tiny tiny ship to um to go fight the to go f fight the Exilians and take back their monsters. Also, while also while this is happening, since the Earth is in in peril, there um, there are three. I will say that uh, there are three different mo monsters that get uh, that get su summoned to get the world back, which are immune to the Exilians' radio wave, so they couldn't be controlled. These these monsters are like the the protectors of the planet, I guess you can say and say that. And these monsters are one of them is being Mothra, who is a giant butterfly, really. Now you're probably thinking this is dumb. <laughs> now, but uh, Mothra isn't that bad bad of an idea. Mo Mothra being again just like King Ghidorah, one of the most famous Godzilla monsters. Mo Mothra <laughs> has giant, massive, powerful wings, who can create hurricanes, and also and also a few stingers here and there. Mothra also, with her antennas, can create a little rainbow beam. And when the Earth is in its most peril, just like the Exilians, Mothra is summoned, and sometimes alongside with her brother Batra. Batra is a more darker version of Mothra, which he can do pretty much the same thing as Mothra can. The only difference is Bat Batra it causes a red lasers instead of blue lasers. Also, during larva form slash caterpillar form, he has a giant massive horn which he can use as a little samurai sword, I guess you can say. The, um, it doesn't end there though, there is one more monster though. The guardian monster is King Caesar, and like I said before, um, the reason why I'm not, I'm not showing you a photo is this because I actually, once again, actually have a toy of King Caesar. King Caesar, as you can see on the top of his head, is a very thick and sharp skull, so you would have charged at monsters. King Caesar is, a, is very agile, so he can do like little flips and stuff. Oops. Oops. Uh. <laughs> And all the, and also one of his unique abilities, when a monster tries to shoot a laser a laser at King Caesar, 
and he, he and it hits him in the eyes or somewhere in the ha face. Instead of taking damage, King Caesar actually absorbs the laser and shoots it back out. So yeah, three monsters and an army of four giant robots against an army of monsters. What are the odds of them winning? Well, eventually the GDF soon sh shuts down the system of the mon soon shuts down the system of the Exilians, and the Exilians lose control of all of Earth's monsters, but not their monsters. So, though, however, um, their their monsters are pretty much screwed at this point. The exi the Exilian the mo monsters get beaten up. Megalon as well as Orga gets killed. Gigan um, flies away, and King Ghidorah as well. King Ghidorah and Gigan being their only survivors. Okay, so that's all I have for for today. Um, next next time we will see, next time we will see people trying to create their own monsters and see how well that goes. Um, I'm if you like th this video, put a like on it. If you want to see more, click the subscribe but button. Show me to your friends. I'm super super Marcel, and and make sure you have a super super time.